Thank you for joining us at six. I'm Jessica Porter. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us tonight. A new legislative session kicked off today at the state capitol and many priorities remain the same as in previous years. COVID relief, affordable housing and child care, as well as wildfire mitigation will once again be hotly debated. Well, Denver 7's Megan Lopez kicks off our in-depth 360 coverage and Megan day one already some tension there at the capitol. Yeah, absolutely. Normally on the first day of the legislative session, it's got a really light feeling. People are getting to see their colleagues once again for the first time in a long time. Everybody's in this building behind me again. So, you know, light and fun, but we had a little bit of that. There was a noticeable shift in the tone, though, pretty quickly. And already some of those disagreements from last session popped up pretty quickly in this one. First day of session to govern on behalf of every Coloradan. First time back in this building to catch up with colleagues, start working on bills and set the tone for the next 120 days for Democrats. So what more perfect time to come together than now? Coloradans need everyone in this chamber coming together to move Colorado forward. That tone was threefold, touting the successes of the past session, acknowledging there's a lot to do to help families and calling for politics to be pushed aside. If you're not engaged in working on policy solutions, we're wasting the people's time. We're not elected to bicker or squabble. We're elected to govern and lead. Republicans, meanwhile, Colorado, especially the Denver metro area, is a very different place in 2022 and not for the better. Struck a very different type of tone. The policies enacted here during the last three years did not help. The current state of our state is not good. Painting a stark contrast to the previous session and the work ahead, first with speeches and then. We think it is important to underscore the failed policies of the last three years and to present people with an option. With a press conference after. My tone today was the, the the angst and the frustration that I'm hearing from people in Colorado. Their priorities are public safety, educational choice and cutting costs, unveiling 44 bills on the first day. We put our best ideas on the table and, and we want to make sure that they get heard. The Republicans are springing all of this on us today and have done nothing to try to bring Democrats on board or try to bring those ideas together. Democrats fought back, though, saying they want to work with Republicans, but they refuse to undo their work on things like criminal justice reform. The actual policies that they support on crime are taking us back to the failed policies that all only overpopulated our jails, wasted tax dollars, and did nothing to improve safety. Harsh words not typical for the first day of session. The undertone for all of this, though, are the midterms ahead and how the policies passed this session will affect that election. So noticeably different takes on last session and the work ahead this session. You heard the minority leader Hugh McKean describe the state of the state as not good. Well, tomorrow we're going to hear from Governor Polis during the state of the state, and he's going to give us his take on what's going on and obviously look ahead. So we'll be paying attention to that, but already dozens of bills unveiled and a lot of work ahead, guys. All right, Megan Lopez at the Capitol tonight once again. Megan, thank you very much. And Colorado Senate Democrats announced 10 bills of their own today to start the session. They say five of them have bipartisan and support and Republican co-sponsors. Among the five, a bill to help recruit and retain more volunteer and seasonal firefighters. They would receive training and mental health care to stay safe while responding to emergencies. Senator Jeff Bridges from Greenwood Village and Senator John Cook from Greeley also drafted a bill to help recruit, train and retain police officers from diverse backgrounds and improve diversity in policing. There's also a bill to help improve reading comprehensions for children. The hope there is to give teachers the tools to ensure that every Colorado, Colorado student is reading at grade level. And if you happen to notice more Democrat backed bills making it through the legislature this year, that's no coincidence. Here's a refresher of how our state legislature is broken up. He, there are 100 lawmakers total. 65 are House representatives, 35 are state senators. In the House, Democrats are in control with a 41 to 24 margin. And that margin is 20 to 15 in the Senate. Democrats also hold the governor's office, who will ultimately sign bills into law. And both Democrats and Republicans have lofty goals for this session. But of course, only time will tell how many of these bills get introduced and passed. But let's look to the data from the past three years. State lawmakers introduced fewer bills in 2019, 2020 and 2021 than they did in each of the four previous years. The House introduced 330 bills last year, the second lowest number of the past decade. And over the past decade, about 63% of bills were eventually signed into law. Now, some helpful notes, hopefully for you. The work the state lawmakers do, of course, impact all of us. So how can you get involved? If you have the time, you can participate in committee hearings. 
You can testify in person or via Zoom. Of course, you can reach out directly to your lawmaker and you can find ways to email or call your lawmaker on the state's website. Also, if you don't know who your legislators are, there's an easy to find, uh, easy find my legislator app on the state's website. So all you have to do is enter your address. You can find a link to all this right now on the DenverChannel.com.